decided to hold our annual Christmas pageant outside for the first time. And for me, that experience really brought to life the line, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. And that day became one of my favorite COVID memories. So thank you all for continuing to celebrate this success with us each year as we come together to tell the best of stories. I'd like to direct your attention to the list of thank yous in your bulletin this morning. This pageant relies on the generosity of so many people. And on behalf of the Board of Christian Education, I'd like to thank you all again. Um, we do have a few other announcements. We will be doing a collection during the birthday party for Jesus, which directly follows um, our pageant. So please join us inside right afterwards. Um, also a reminder that our friends at North Hadley Church will be having a reception for their leaving pastor Gordon Pullen right after church. You're welcome to join them. On Christmas Eve, we will not be having a 10 a.m. service, but we do hope you'll join us at 7 p.m. for our traditional candlelit service where we will again tell the story and sing the songs. We will also be having a party on December 29th, so everybody is welcome to join us for that as well. Um, on a sadder note, I did want to let everyone know of the recent passing of our friend Alice Underwood. Please keep her family in your prayers. And I think Judy has, Judy, do you have an announcement? Just a quick uh, a reminder, next week is when the Jesse's House gifts are due to be in. I know some brought them today, but you have another week. Thanks. Okay. So right after the pageant ends, we will pause to have a moment to take pictures. We'll offer a benediction, and then everyone is invited inside to have birthday cake for Jesus. We're going to sing happy birthday and cut the cake. It's going to be a really good time. Thank you all again for coming, especially on a blustery kind of day. We are going to start our service by lighting the Advent wreath. Good morning, you all. Can you hear me? It's important you hear me because I want you to know you're crazy. <laughs> me too. <laughs> But we're here this morning to celebrate, even though it's gray. So we'll begin with the, although it's already lit, the lighting of the Christmas wreath. So I'll be reading the non bowl face, and you will read the bowl faced. In cities and villages, in tents and skyscrapers, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is waiting to be born. In us, in our neighbors, in this world we live in. Amid our current conflict and dissent, amid fractious families and partisan rancor, and the candle is lit. Let us join together in the ancient prayer from Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so the story begins. What one author called the greatest story ever told. And you are here in this 300 plus church community because of this story. So what I'd like you to do today is try to use your imaginations and project yourself back 2,000 years ago to a little town called Nazareth, 
which is in the currently called country of Israel. And so we begin with remembering Mary's exchange with Gabriel the angel. Once upon a time, great story opening, there once was a young woman named Mary who lived in Nazareth. Now she was engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. When God sent the angel Gabriel, and my favorite burrow, to her. Now Gabriel told her she would be with child by the Holy Spirit and give birth to the Son of God. Imagine her reaction. An angel of the Lord also appeared to Joseph and told him, now you take Mary for your wife. So Joseph did as the angel commanded him to do, and they were married. see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. In those days, Caesar Augustus decreed that a census should be taken of all Roman people, and every man and every man was ordered to return to the town of his ancestors to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to the town of Bethlehem in order to be registered. Mary went with him, although she was expecting a child. I'm a little worried Lila's laughing. <laughs> Stubborn old donkey. <laughs> now, while Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, of course, what always happens, the time came for the baby to be born. But because of the census, the inns had no room for them no vacancy. But a kindly innkeeper said, you can stay in my stable. <laughs> You're having too good a time. <laughs> okay. And so Mary gave birth to her son in the stable of the kind innkeeper. She wrapped her baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And Mary remembered the words she had said to her cousin Elizabeth. My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because God my Savior, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy from one generation to another. He shows mercy to those who honor him. Yes. 
And with the birth of Jesus, we remember the prophet's words, which say when he comes, he will rule his people with the strength that comes from the Lord and with the majesty of the Lord God himself. His people will live in safety because people all over the earth will acknowledge his greatness and please God, he will bring peace. The night that Jesus was born, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. Today in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see what has happened. Yeah. 
And so the shepherds found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And as the prophet Isaiah said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those, those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, when the shepherds had seen the baby Jesus, they spread the word, and all who heard it were amazed. And Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds glorified and praised God for all the things they had heard and seen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked where to find the King of the Jews. King Herod heard this and he sent them to find Jesus, wanting them to report back his exact location. So the wise men followed the star in the east and it led them to the place where the child was. And the kings found Jesus with his mother and presented to him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They bowed down and worshiped him and were overjoyed. Then, having been warned in a dream that Herod wanted to harm Jesus, they decided to return home by another route. Oh, 
Mary and Joseph named their baby Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was born. Then they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. The word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You guys did such a great job. We're going to pause for a photo opportunity, okay? Everybody ready for that? I'm gonna move a few smaller people to the front. Friends, before we leave here today, we're going to pray once more together. This holiday season and always, may you seek with the hope of the shepherds. May you choose peace as the wise men did. May you sing with joy like the angels. And may you let love guide your steps like Mary and Joseph. Go now and carry his light into his world. Thank you for coming and amen. Amen.